If you want to teach in the way that the brain learns, then it has to be active, engaged, meaningful, socially interactive, iterative, and joyful. And what do those characteristics also represent? Play. Through play, we continue to develop as, as young people, we develop our imagination. Children play naturally. What happens is when it's in school, it needs to be facilitated by a smart teacher who understands what the differences are between just play and playful learning. Play is incredibly important in early learning for a number of reasons. It builds cognitive skills, it builds learning skills, it helps them experiment and figure out how to be inventive, how to be creative, how to be imaginative, how to connect ideas to each other. There's research that shows that children who play later on have more success in life, you know, in their jobs. Our program in this play continuum becomes a springboard potentially for the rest of their lives. Does my eye look big? Whoa. A bit small. If we have a learning goal in mind, then we talk about guided play. And in guided play, the environment is structured, but the kids are the explorers and discoverers in that environment. Their wings are still stuck together, so when they come out of the chrysalis, they can't fly right away. They have to stretch their wings. The teacher is really describing the materials, the intentions behind the materials, and the skills that we want to capture when the children are playing. So what you choose to put out for children has intention, and then you want to guide them. You want to give them language behind it. You want to help them figure out how they can take that to the next level. You want to support them, and then you want to know when to step back. And there's persons from Mongolia. So what we do is we set a group of skills out as outcomes that we want for each age group. How those skills are developed are going to be really understood by the teacher, and the teacher is going to set up opportunities for activities and playful things and guided play, where they're actually doing those things that are building it. It's almost like they don't even know they're learning because they're having so much fun, and the fun is the thing that keeps them engaged. We know that playing with blocks matters because the spatial center of the brain and using terms like in, around, through, on, which we call spatial terms, actually relates to your later math skills, believe it or not, and that the brain areas are coordinated for spatial learning and math. One of the important things about science that we have to think with young children is that they are natural scientists. If you leave children to explore things that float and things that sink, they're going to start forming some hypotheses and testing them out. And then later when they have to learn about density and, and some concepts that might be a bit more abstract, that will come back to them. Because it rained a lot, we decided to make a bridge. The purpose of this project actually came from the students. So it shows us how when we listen to students and give them voice, they can have agency of their own learning. Play begins to uh, connect with and develop certain interests that we may have. And then over time, it's about supporting those interests and developing them into something that we might call a passion. Once we've triggered and maintained an interest and students start taking that work a little bit further on their own, we're here to cheerlead and support and give them everything that they need to further develop that interest and start to move into the realm of expertise which then eventually moves us out to the highest levels years later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm published. At Avenues, we figured out how to keep interdisciplinary learning throughout all the grades. So what you see is a lot of the similar things that happen in early childhood, I see replicated in older grades here. And as they continue to pursue those passions as teenagers and then young adults, that passion evolves into a sense of purpose. And over time, in adult work, 
One's sense of purpose becomes a form of adult play, disciplined play. What do scientists do? What do artists and musicians do? They play, but it's disciplined.